Okay, uh, I'm very ochin nurad budich des, and umin yara ochin nurad Israel, pevi raz desit let. So, pevi yachachu melitza nieste. Siglasna, agree? Siglasna? Siglasna? Yeah, agree with me. <laughs> and uh, hallelujah. Father in heaven, we ask you to come and speak, move, change us, uh, that these will not be words of men's wisdom. But the demonstration of the power. Demonstration of the spirit. And of power. Lord God, help us today to drive out everything that is not from you. To hear from heaven, give us grace to follow you, to know you, and the power of your resurrection. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? I need to know. Okay. Because I want to, uh, I don't want to preach at you today. I want to talk with you. I want to hear from God together. Okay? Out of show. It seems like today that the Lord is inspiring to talk about our calling. I've heard this a lot today. But what exactly is our calling? What is this all about? It says that God has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Before he created the heavens and the earth, before he created the land of Israel, before he created the Canaret, before he created Jerusalem, he chose you. What I believe God wants you to know is who you really are. If you were chosen before God created the universe, before he created Jerusalem, before he created the ocean and the mountains, you must be extremely important and special and you have a purpose here. It is not to go to a meeting on Shabbat. It's not about being together once a week. He's called us before the world began. He has a purpose for your life. It says that he's called us to his own glory and excellence. He's called us, God, the creator of the universe. He's called us to be like him. He created us in his image. And we also, in the Brit Chadashah, we are in a new covenant. Not only are we made in his image, but now we have his nature. He lives inside of you. God, the creator of the universe, 
is inside of you. This is greater than what Moses experienced. It's greater than what Abraham experienced. God didn't live inside of him. God was his friend. He spoke with God. Moses spoke with God. He argued with God. But God did not live within Moses. Moses had a glow on his face because he spent time with him on the mountain. He had to wear a veil. But the word of God says that we do not have veils on our face and that we are being transformed from one degree of glory to another. We have glory inside of us. The word of God says if anyone is in the Messiah he is a new creation. The old is gone. It's passed away. The new has come. The time has come especially for us the remnant of Israel to know who we really are. We have been called not to meet but to change this nation. We have been called by changing this nation to change the world. Are you willing to receive what you already have? It is glorious. It is powerful. It is huge. It is big. He called us as the people of Israel. As a people for his own possession. Out of all the people that are on the face of the earth. If you were born Jewish, there is a calling on your life to begin with. And he made a new covenant, not with the nations, but with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And if you were born Jewish and you know the Messiah, you are not only chosen, you are chosen twice. You are the chosen among the chosen. And if you're not born Jewish, it doesn't matter because you become part of Israel, just as chosen and one with Israel to change this land and to change the world. There is nothing on earth more exciting, more important than what God has called us to do. It says the Lord has chosen Zion and desired it as his habitation. It says that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. We read about the Kohanim in the Torah. We are the Kohanim today. We are God's priests. We're a nation that intercedes between God and the people. Do you realize how important you are? It should not be a question about whether you come to a prayer meeting or not. You are the prayer meeting. Without you, God is not going to be able to do what he desires. Every one of us are connected to one another. If you don't fulfill your purpose, I can't fulfill mine. The hand cannot say to the foot, 
I do not need you. We are all called to function together for a glorious purpose. Yeshua did not call us, did not choose us so that we can have a better life. He did not call you here to give you a better life in Israel to leave your life in the Soviet Union or wherever you came from. Whether it's from Russia, from Ukraine, from Kazakhstan, from Uzbekistan. He did not call you here to have a better life. He's called you. He's called us to lose our life, to give our life to him so then he could turn it into something for his purpose. The problem is many of us become focused on ourselves, on our own lives. But Yeshua said, he who finds his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake he will find his life. Yeshua came to seek and to save the lost. He came to look for his lost sheep. Most of you he has found. I don't know everyone who's here. Maybe there are a few of you that are still lost. That can change today. But most of us here, we were once lost, but he found us. He came to seek and to save the lost. And he said this, and this is very important. We need to receive this. He said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. In the same way, Adinakava, as the Father sent Yeshua, he sends you. Do you believe that? Do you really? I don't think so. I don't think that you really believe that. Do you really believe that in the same way God the Father, the creator of the universe, sent Yeshua to this earth in the same way He sent you? True, right? Maybe. Maybe yes, maybe no. Mojat beat. There is no Mojat beat in the Bible. He calls us to be fishers of men. The first words of Yeshua, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. You know what his last words are? Go, not stay, go and make disciples of all nations. He said, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white for harvest. You must take your eyes off of you. 
you must lift up your head and see the need out there and as you were called before the foundation of the world to seek and to save that which is lost as you begin to give your life to this your problems will feel less important. I'm not saying they will disappear. There will always be problems. But you can't, we're not called to focus on them. Yeshua said something that I know is true. He said if, if, you make the decision to seek my kingdom not your kingdom not your life my kingdom and my righteousness first I will give you everything that you need everything of course we must work but he will work through you he will arrange things because he does not want us to worry about our lives here let him do the worrying because he cares about us he loves us he gave his only son how much more does he care about food on your table about a bed to sleep in about being warm he cares so much about every little thing and when we trust him by not worrying about all this stuff and seek to do his will to fulfill his purpose not our own purpose we must deny ourselves in a messianic Jewish congregation and in the messianic Jewish world we don't certainly want to wear a cross we don't have a cross on the wall because a cross is like a religious symbol that causes Jewish people not to come to God but to run for our lives but no. there is a message no. of this cross the death of the Messiah and it's the death of ourselves not to kill us physically but Yeshua says that, that, that we are to die that we have died that we've died with him so his resurrection life is released in our lives. This is very deep. What does it mean that we have died with him? It says that we've been buried with him. And what, what my understanding which continues to grow because it's such a deep thing but that everything about our lives needs to die and then there's a new birth something from God that is holy because the Apostle Paul who was a rabbi he said there is nothing good that dwells in my flesh nothing and so we need to realize that the Messiah who lives in us can only live in us to the fullest extent when we get out of the way we, even our thinking is not correct we are to renew our minds so that we have the mind of the Messiah 
We can't just read the Bible. We need to take it in. We need to, to eat this word until it becomes part of us. Because Yeshua said, my words are spirit and life. And even more than that, he is the word of God. I know that we try to uh, be like a synagogue. We're still trying to figure out what does this look like? Jews who have come into the kingdom of God. We don't have a video of what it was like in first century Israel. So we have a Torah, which is a lot like a synagogue. And people touch the Torah like in the synagogue. And so we um, feel at home. But who are we? Because Yeshua is the Torah. The Torah had become a person. The Word of God became flesh. And He lives inside of us. This is so powerful. It's enough. Believing this is enough to completely change you. You cannot even be depressed and believe this at the same time. It's not possible. That's why we must grab a hold of the truth. It's not enough to be a believer. I don't call myself a Jewish believer. You know why? Because in the Word of God, it says even the demons believe. But it says that we are to know. You don't believe really. You know. You know that Yeshua came here and he died and he rose from the dead. Do you know this? Yes, no? No, you know this. You know. It's even more than belief. It's real faith. It's something that is real. And it, and it is life changing. One of the problems that we all have in the Messianic Jewish world and even in the world of the church in Israel near the Sea of Galilee was the first Messianic Jewish congregation. And these men more than any other human beings on the face of the earth changed the world. They changed the world forever. These 12 Jewish men and the disciples of Yeshua. They met together but their meeting was like being in a boat. A fishing boat. Their purpose was not to have a good meeting. It was not, by the way, I really loved your worship, but their purpose was not to have good worship. Their purpose was not to have a good message. Their purpose was to seek and to save the lost. They were like a fishing boat. They were about the business of fishing. 
of, of proclaiming the word of God, of strengthening the new believers, of going out into the market, going out into the world, bringing people in, meeting people, loving them, keeping their eyes off of themselves, realizing you have eternal life. You are richer than anyone. You're richer. You have more. You have more than someone with five Lexuses, ten Mercedes. They cannot buy what you have. Your purpose, my purpose, is to seek them, especially the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There really is a devil. I'm writing a book. The name of my book is Religion, the Enemy of God. Man-made religion drives more people away from God than anything else. We need to drive religion away from us so that we become what God called us to become. When I first became a follower of Yeshua, everywhere I went, people were talking about him on the streets you could not get away and at that time tens of thousands of Jewish people our eyes were open for the first time and we saw that Yeshua is the Messiah, that the Messiah came, that there really is a God. I didn't really know, but now that you know, you must give it away. The Word of God says that when you water something, when you give out, when you, when you water, you will be watered. The measure you give is the measure you receive. Otherwise, this becomes a religion. Could you imagine if the disciples, when they received the Holy Spirit in an upper room in Jerusalem, they had this powerful time. They all received tongues of fire. Can you imagine if they said to one another, this was great. This is the best meeting we ever had. Let's meet again tomorrow. And they never went out on the streets. Because it's when they went outside that God really moved. And 3,000 at one time came into the kingdom of God. We are those disciples today here in the land of Israel. We need to get out of the upper room. We need to wake up and shake ourselves. Am I right? Yes, no? I don't understand why you're so quiet. We are called as the remnant of Israel to lift up our voices, to make a difference. And we need the fire of God, the passion 
Do, if you don't have it, I want to encourage you to get it. The thing I love about the kingdom of God, if there's something you don't have, and you're honest about it, and you ask, it says it will be Написано, что вы получите. Я не знаю, сколько из вас верят в своем сердце, что мы живем в последние дни. Кто верит в это? Половина верит. Кто верит, что мы не в последние дни живем? Well, how could half raise their hand that they believe it? And they don't know. How many just don't know? How many don't care? <laughs> the reason I ask. One of the signs of the last days. When the disciples asked Yeshua. <laughs> What is the sign of your coming? And the end of the age. He said something that's really, really interesting. He said, because wickedness is multiplied. Because Evil grows in the world. And probably today things have never been worse. You can't, you have to keep your eyes open when you're in a, especially, you know, in Israel or everywhere in the world. Things are un unraveling. The world doesn't even know what marriage is anymore. Is it between a man and a woman? Two men? Two women? Things are breaking down. In, in America, young children come to school. They used to bring an apple to the teacher, a yabloka. Today they bring guns and kill people. It says because wickedness is multiplied, the love of many Will, will grow cold. There is a coldness. I travel to Messianic congregations all across the world. There is a coldness toward those especially who are lost. People have stopped caring. And the Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. If this is your heart, if you feel that you have grown cold, that it doesn't excite you to bring life to those who are dead. If it doesn't excite you to join together with others who are called before the foundation of the world to pray and to ask God for change, for power, for revival, if that is not interesting to you. If there is a coldness in your heart, 
Прохладен. The good news is this. That if you're honest, if you come to the light and say to God, Lord, I know I don't want to be this way. Change me. Fill me with your, with your fire, with your spirit. He will do that. During the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, these are called the 10 days of awe or the 10 days of repentance. And in the Jewish community, we greeted, we um, greet one another. May your name be written in the book of life. But for us, those 10 days are every day. We're to examine ourselves and be honest, come to the light as he is the light. And it says that the blood of the Messiah will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we could begin again. Sometimes we need to do this day then. I really believe God wants to do something here today. To come before God and say, it is no longer I who live, but Messiah who lives in me and the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What I want to ask, if you know that your heart has grown cold and you want to come before God now and ask him to send his fire so that your heart will be like yet Jeremiah. He said, your word is in my heart and I cannot hold it back. I must bring it forth. If your heart needs the fire of God, I want you to stand up right now. Don't look around. We should never be embarrassed. Because remember, there's nothing good that dwells within my flesh. We always need to be renewed. That's why Joshua, God spoke through Joshua. He said, choose this day whom you will serve. I want you to all step up close, so we're all close. Because this is not an audience. This is a boat. This is a fishing boat. Come up, come on, don't be a Just move up here. Let's move up together. I don't, I just sense the Spirit of God is about to re be released. Everybody come that, that... Yes. Be... Please come. Please. Please. Thank you, Father. Come, everybody come up. Don't, don't, if you stand, don't stay in the back. You are included. This is not like being in the, at the Bolshoi in an audience. This is not a theater. This is 
the body of Messiah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to open your hearts right now. <laughs> Father, I ask you to come right now. Because your word says that you are light. You are pure light. And I ask you to come and in your light bring everything to light and show every one of us what needs to be burnt up. Your word says that our worship in the new covenant is that our bodies we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We are now in the temple. This is like the Beit HaMikdash. Lord God, this is this is where your glory dwells. In the new covenant, each of us are the temple of the living God. And together, we become a temple that you live in. And Lord, I ask you to drive out all darkness right now. And Lord, I ask you to begin to send your fire, to send from heaven. Lord, the fire of God would consume the sacrifice. It was so powerful that the fire even consumed the stones. And Lord, if our hearts today have become hard, send your fire to consume the stony hearts. Lord God, we ask you together. I want you to, to call out to God right now. To call out from your heart right now. God, send the fire. He said, I wish that you were either cold nor hot. Because if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. We don't we know he doesn't want us to be lukewarm. And we know he doesn't want us to be cold. But he wants us to choose this day. <laughs> to be filled with his passion, with his fire, with his love, and let it drive out everything in your life that chooses something else. Ask God now. Transform me. Transform me. Repeat it after me. Transform me. Transform me. Transform me. Send your fire. Fill me with your fire. Fill me with your fire. In the name of Yeshua. We ask for the power of God to come right now. Lord God, make this congregation a burning flame in Haifa. Let many be drawn, not to a building, but to the temple of the living God. Send them to us, and send us to them. Father, I pray that each one here would own their calling that, that they would see bring revelation now so that everyone here can see that as the Father sent you that you are sending them now thank you Abba.
We bless you, Lord God. Lord God, I pray there would be no lukewarm here, but fire from heaven. In the name of Yeshua, we pray, pray for your healing power and decisions to be made to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and to watch what you do to take you at your word to test you that your word is true that says have no worry no anxiety about anything but to thank the living God. So Lord, we thank you for transforming everyone here. Everyone here. Everyone here. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Change us. Empower us. Revive us. Make us flames of fire. Your word says that you make your angels like the wind and your servants flames of fire. Send your fire. You're not far, we're not far from the place. And Mount, on Mount Carmel, where you sent your fire many years ago. Send your fire on the sacrifice. See Chas now. We are the sacrifice. Consume us, Lord. Consume us, Lord. We present our bodies. We present our lives before you. Stretch out your hands to him and just tell him, I am yours. Here I am. Here I am.